Welcome back, and it's puzzle time again with a new case for you with Sudoku Sleuth. Now, today's case is a very pretty looking puzzle. You've got a rainbow of colors coming out here on the right hand side, and it, indeed, I, I suspect this is genuinely a rainbow with all the different colors in the order they expect. You also have what is presumably a white light here on the left side of the puzzle, and a prism that's breaking it all out. Now, I'm not sure what any of these lines actually mean, but I'm sure the rules will explain it to us momentarily. Now, on this channel, we often are solving Sudoku variants, meaning they're Sudoku puzzles with a twist. So that allows us to fill in a grid that's completely devoid of numbers. And today's puzzle is once again no exception with that, with 99% sneaky, generously giving us zero digits in the grid to get started. Onwards with the rules for today's puzzle. So digits separated, oh, normal Sudoku rules apply. So that means digits one through to nine must be placed in every row, column, and box in the grid. Digits separated by a matter particle, a white dot, are consecutive. So presumably that means one and two, for example, would be consecutive. And then we also have digits separated by an antimatter particle, a black dot, are in a one to two ratio. Not all particles are given. Uh, and if you're familiar with Kropke dots, which we've featured on the channel before, you've seen these white and black dots and how powerful they can be in terms of restricting what can be placed on these dominoes of digits. Now, what's unique in this puzzle here is amplification. Now, the sum of the digits along the seven colored light beams so presumably that's all of these cells, of which yeah, there are three cell lines, yep, they all are, is equal to double the sum of the digits along the white line in row seven. The prism, which I was questioning earlier, the gray line is cosmetic and does not affect the puzzle. That's all the rules we have. So let's get on with solving this puzzle. Ah, and if you wish to play along, link is in the description down below. With that said, let's restart the clock and get going. Now, aside from the fact that there's nowhere else to start, in general, I'm immediately drawn to all of these colorful lines. And the reason I'm thinking about it is seven three cell lines, and they don't overlap, they're all parallel lines, is a lot of cells, 21 cells to be exact. And 21 cells to add up to the equivalent of five cells down here, or even double those five cells, is still quite restrictive. So my thinking is if we minimize all of these cells, how much leeway do we actually have in terms of what digits we have to place on the white line? So let's take a look at this. So uh, I'm just going to actually put in the totals of the minimum. So the minimum here could, would be 1, 2, 3, which is a 6. Minimum here would be 1, 2, 3, which is another 6. Minimum in box 3 would be 6 digits, 1 through to 6, so that would be 21. Uh, if you're familiar with the triangle numbers, so that's just adding up all the sums of 1 through to 6, and you could quickly deduct what these would be. In box six, we've got eight cells. So minimum what that would be would be 36. And then the last cell that we have here in box nine is a minimum of one. Now the sum of all of these would be six, 12, 33, 34, plus 36 for 70. And if we divide that by two, that's 35. And that's perfect. Now, the maximum we can make the white line here is 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. And if you sum up all of these digits, they'll come up also to 35. Um, one quick way of doing this is think through the entire row. You've got the digits 1 through to 9. If you sum all of these up, that's 45. And if we put in the digits 1, 2, 3, and 4 in here, that's 10 
45 minus 10, that's 35. And that is indeed the minimum all of these cells can be. So we've actually got our break in already. And our first digit, because this has to be a minimum, that's a one. That's one, two, three, one, two, three. Um, I've spotted another thing, but let's just, I don't know if I'm necessarily going to fill in all of these. So if this is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6, that's 7, 8, and 9. Uh, that's 9. And we know the rest is all the digits 1 through to 8. Now, taking a look at column 4, sorry, column 6 here, um, I can see that this is a quadruple, and 4 has to be down here. I'm actually going to disable checking pencil marks, just give myself a little bit more of a challenge. So the four has to be paired up on crop key dots with either a two and an eight. The two is also gone. So that has to be an eight. And it will have to be joined with a seven or a nine, um, given it has to be consecutive. And we've got ourselves a start. Continuing on column six, you can see this is another cell that is joined by a black dot. So these are quite restricted cells, as I said in my introduction. They can only be from the digits one, two, three, which is gone, four, gone, eight, gone. And therefore, the only remaining digits that can go in here is a six. And that has to be coupled with a three. And these would be a four or five, and we, sorry, a five or seven. We don't know what the running order is. That's five, seven, nine, because all the other digits are now taken column. And we actually know this because we've got seven, nine looking at this cell here in row one. So this is a five joined by four or six. And this can't be a six because a six can only pair up with a three on a black crop key dot and three in box two is already gone. So this has to be a four, two is gone. This has to be an eight. Um, seven, eight, nine looking down here means that seven, nine has to be on the left column in box two. And that's the only remaining digit is six. That's not seven, nine. Anything else obvious? You know, that's not five, that's got to be seven, that's a nine, that's a seven. A seven has to be in here. That's not an eight or a six or a nine. So that's five or six, that's five or eight. Okay, and these are one, two, or three. Five has to be in these two cells in box A, so five is not in here. Now I'm drawn to this cell because it has to be consecutive, and you can see there's a long run of consecutive digits already in row seven of this grid. So can this be a nine? No, because that's the eight is gone. Eight, it could be eight with a nine, can't be with a seven. Let's just do this methodically. Nine is gone, eight is available. Seven would need to be, seven has to be in here. And it would be joined with either a six or an eight, possible. And six would be needing to be joined with a five. So this is a five, six, or nine cell. And actually, this black crop key dot tells us immediately that this has to be a six, three. That's not six. That's a seven, eight, nine set. Therefore, that's the six, that's the five. That's not three, 
one or two and it can't be paired with a three. So that is one or two. That's one, two or four. And five has to be down here. In fact, four also has to be down here. These three cells are known because we've got everything else in row eight. So one, two, three, this has to be one of four, five or nine. This white crop key dealt tells us this nine is not in here. It's a four, five pair. And the nine isn't down there. And then we're left with six, seven and eight, it seems. Um, again, the black crop key dot would help us. So this can't be a six because it's got to be coupled with a three. Seven, it's not a multiple of anything. That's a two in the digits one to nine. And then therefore this has to be an eight with a four, a five, not eight. Also not eight, that's a seven. And that's from one, two, and three. It's not three. So I'm drawn to this shape here. Because if you think about it for a second, this can't be a one, because this would be a two, and this would be a two. So this is indeed the two, the one, three pair. And since one is unavailable, that's got to be a four. It's not. Just taking a look if there's anything obvious in box three and not necessarily. So we need here a five nine pair. We know the order of that. And we need a four eight pair and we don't know the order of that. At least not yet. For the eight here actually can't be an eight because nine is gone, seven is gone. They're actually on the same row. So that's four, that's eight. That's one of three or five. Nine has to be in here because of these two digits. Nine cannot be on a black crop key dot, so nine must go in there. So we're really only left with this has to be a four eight pair. Now, I was just taking a look at this thinking, if you remember again, black crop key dots can only be one, two or three gone. Six is possible, but we'd have to be coupled with a three, which is also gone. So we're left with four and eight. And in fact, we know the order of these. That's eight, that's four. That's not four. That is four, two, one. That's a one, five pair. That's not eight, that's not nine. Therefore, that is the nine. Let me just, yeah, because in fact, we also know the order of all of these. So that's seven, that's nine, that's eight. And this puzzle is very quickly collapsing. I think we can continue to make progress. So I just, you know, caught my eye this white crop key dot that these two digits have to be adjacent. And obviously, that's a, an even number with an odd number. So that's got to include a two, which helpfully tells us this is a three, that's a two. This is now a one, two pair. That's not two. Three has to be up here. That's not three. That is the three. And that's a one, two pair. We can now complete the rest of this row. We need five, six, and seven. It's not five, that's not seven this is i'm just gonna what of of all the digits that are possible that's not seven not five so this is six or eight therefore this has to be the seven so we've got obviously the five six pair in here so this has to be an eight um this is helpful six down here nine eight seven
or you can see in box six has to be in here and this is a one two pair and we know the order of it that's one that's two and this set is three five and six and let's take a look at you know you can quickly place this six is i in one of these two cells that's not six that is six that's three or five That's got to be seven or nine. We know that. That's seven. That's nine. Seven. So we're left with six, eight, five, and nine. Nine has to go in here. Six has to be on this side. Nothing is disambiguating that. Eight has to be in here, five, five, six pair. That looks down here on this cell, that's three, that's five. Continuing one, five, three, one, seven, one, two. Right, so eight is gone. So this could be a six, three pair or a, and that's the only thing it can be because we've got one is gone, four is gone, eight is gone. So yes, there is a two that's left, but it can't pair with anything. And therefore this has to be a three, six pair. And we don't know the order once again, that's three, six, five, two, three, six. Now this would have to be joined with um, either a two, four, five, or seven. And you can see the only digit that's available in here right now is a two. So that's three, that's six, that's one, two, three, one, two, one, five, six. Just quickly scanning, that's five, and that's four. That's a phenomenal puzzle sneaky thank you so much for creating it for us really enjoyable and like i said at the introduction quite pretty um i hope you enjoyed today's puzzle and let me know how you got on with the puzzle in the comments down below and hope to see you all back in tomorrow